What is up, So Hills kids and everybody else around there watching? You may be thinking, what is he doing here today? This is weird, but um, we're gonna get to that. So you guys stick around and see why I'm here on this workshop today. But anyways, I'm super glad that you guys are here today. I'm so excited that we get to learn more about God and his big plan and the things he's doing in our lives. So today we're going to be talking about 2 Timothy. Now you may be thinking, well, wait a minute, aren't we going chronologically through the Bible? And I think 2 Timothy is New Testament and we're still in the Old Testament. Well, today we're wrapping up our series on what the Bible is. And we've been talking a little bit about how the Bible is a tool for us. But today I really wanted to drive home that point. So here's the thing. I'm in this workshop full of tools. This right here, a big dangerous saw. I'm not going to mess with that, but I'm going to head over here and look at some of the tools we've got and really uh, talk to you guys about what it would mean to use these incorrectly and correctly. So this right here is a broom. A broom is a very basic tool that I think all of us know what to use it for. You sweep. Now, if I tried to take this broom and use it like, say, a shovel, that wouldn't really work now, would it? It would not be very effective at picking up or moving dirt at all. This, on the other hand, is a very special, unique tool. This actually tells you the moisture, how much water is in the wood that you put it on. If you're building and you take this and beep, you scan it up against some wood, it's going to tell you exactly how much percentage of moisture there is in that wood. Now, this is a very specialized tool. You see, you have tools like shovels that can be used for a lot. You have tools that are very special and unique that can be used for a very specific purpose. Now, why am I talking about all of these tools? Well, because today we're going to talk about how the Bible is a tool for us. So let's dive into our message today and see what scripture has for us. So you guys read along on the screen with me while we read 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. And it says, You should know this, Timothy, that in the last days there will be very difficult times, for people will love only themselves and their money, and they will be boastful and proud, scoffing at God, disobedient to their parents and ungrateful. They will consider nothing sacred. They will be loving and unforgiving, and they will slander others and have no self-control. They will be cruel and hate what is good. They will betray their friends, be reckless, be puffed up, be prided with pride and love, pleasure rather than God. They will act religious, but they will reject the power that can make them godly. Stay away from people like that. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes that sounds like today, doesn't it? There's people that are mean, that are unkind, that bully, that hurt other people, that do terrible things. And we live in a world with that because we live in a broken world. But what do we do about it? You see, Timothy is talking about the struggles of this world, but is there a tool? Is there something that we can use maybe for specific or broad purpose? Yes. I hope you guys are catching on now. But the Bible, this right here, God's holy word is a tool for us. So let's read what it says down below. Once again, guys, you can read on screen. We're going to be in chapter 3, verses 14 through 17. And it says, but you must remain faithful to the things you have been taught. You know they are true, for you know you can trust those who taught you. You have been taught the Holy Scripture from childhood, and they have given you wisdom to receive the salvation that comes by trusting in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is inspired by God and useful to teach us what is true and make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we're wrong and teaches us to do what is right. God uses it to, pre to prepare and equip his people to do good works. Wow, I don't know about you guys, but just like this room full of tools in here, God's Word is a book full of tools. It says it's good for teaching, for showing us what's wrong, for giving us wisdom, and for giving us guidance. Guys, God's Word is a tool that can be used every single day. So I want to encourage you guys, if we have a tool that can help us every day, why wouldn't we use it? Why would we go try and dig a hole with a broom when we have a shovel or, you know, a whole entire tractor with a backhoe and everything that could dig the hole in two scoops? That's what the Bible is like for us. So I want to encourage you guys, use that tool. Use the tool that the Bible is for yourself and grow in your wisdom and understanding. Learn how you can be a better person and love people better and ultimately how you can draw closer to Jesus. Because ultimately, Jesus wants that relationship with you. And the Bible is one of the best ways to get it. So thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you guys really understand that God's Word is a great tool for you to use. So don't neglect it. Don't leave it sitting on your nightstand. Read it every day and learn and grow from it. Thank you so much for watching, guys. The rest of the Bible story, if you want to watch the Bible story, is after this. But if not, guys, I'm going to see you guys next week for our next episode. Bye.
A man named Paul wrote a letter to his friend Timothy. Paul was a follower of Jesus. He was also a missionary. That means that he went wherever God sent him and he told people the good news about Jesus. Now, Timothy had traveled with Paul and helped him. Timothy was also a leader at a church. Now, two letters from Paul to Timothy are a part of the Bible. And in that second letter, Paul taught Timothy about living for Jesus and how to help others live for Jesus too. This is what Paul wrote. Hard times are coming. Some people will not live for God. They will love themselves and money most of all. They will be proud, unloving, and unholy. They will disobey their parents and live without self-control. Instead of loving God, they will do whatever feels good to them. Stay away from these people. They will never come to know the truth about God. Paul reminded Timothy of two men, Janese and Jabriz, who had challenged Moses in Egypt. They were foolish not to believe the truth. So Paul wrote, you know me well, and you even suffered like I did. Everyone who wants to live for Jesus will face hard times too. Remember what you have learned and believed. From the time you were a child, you learned from scripture. The scriptures are able to give you the wisdom you need to be saved through faith in Jesus. Paul knew that the Bible helps people live for God. He said, all scripture is inspired by God. It is useful for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, and for training in righteousness. With the Bible, everyone who follows God can be ready and have everything that they need to do every good work. Paul wrote to teach Timothy how to live for God. The Bible tells us about God's plan for people to have forgiveness through his son, Jesus. Jesus obeyed God's word perfectly. We can follow Jesus' example to read, believe, and obey the Bible as we live for God's glory.